Here's their moisture throughout the field and their irrigation. This is their sand content. So they use their model to predict stuff. And then uh, Larry came and said, hey, we have a backhoe, do you want? Yeah. And I said, oh, yes, please, thank you. <laughs> and uh, it's because that one is really heavy. It's the, the clay is really yeah. big. Yes, this one. This one is okay. This is easy. This is uh, fast. Yeah. So I know it's difficult to, for everyone to see the pit, but uh, I'll, I'll describe it. And then um, quickly, we'll go through the horizonation and how we classify this. And then... Um, uh, and then I'll get out of the pit, and anyone who wants to come down and check out the horizons, take closer pictures, by all means, do so. Am I speaking loud enough, or do I need to use the microphone? Okay, good. I'll just yell. I prefer to yell than me. Alright. Alright, so this 
totally new fit. I've never seen this one. Um, so the one that we've the one that we've dug here, this is the this is the Vineland soil. All right, um, and the Vineland soil. If you look at the soil, the post there that's on the, the what's it called environmental setting and soils. Um, so the uh, the profile is there, and the analytical data that is in here. I have I've got more details on the analytical, but in any case. Um, the analytical data that's that's in for this profile is actually the the, the, the this soil profile. We sampled it last year for uh, for another tour, and we ran all the samples through the lab. Uh, the other site, uh, they're just uh, generic analytical numbers uh, for this for that type of soil. But in any case, so what we have here is this is the Vineland soil. So in the Canadian system, this is classified as a Glade Brunisolic Gray Brown Luvisol. So uh, there's there are two different orders soil orders represented in this soil pit. So the first order that's represented in the dominant process is the luvisol, um, and then the secondary process is uh, uh, this is where the brunisolic comes in. So the because we have a soil order, the brunisolic order. But in this case, uh, if you go through our our taxonomy and our key, the luvisols key out first. Okay, and so that's why this is a luvisol. We can go through the horizon. Um, so, all right. So at the service we have the AP, um, and so if you remember, uh, Larry said that uh, they used to do cash crop here, um, and so uh, when the land was originally broken, this was all this all used to be tilled. Okay, so they had livestock, and then and they had cash crops. So this would have been all tilled at some point. Um, in the orchard, they only mow now. They don't till at all in the orchard. They just mow the grass and the grapes. And the grapes on the other side, um, you'll see they uh, they till every second row every second year. So every row gets tilled every second year. So they alternate. Um, and so here you can see, so we have the the, the original AP. So this would have been the, about the depth of, of plowing when they first were working this land. Okay. So the AP in the Canadian system, the P is just basically plow. So uh, if this was a native forest profile, we would call this an H horizon here for humans. Okay. So this is just basically... Uh, incorporation of organic matter, and in this case, we've plowed it, so we have a P. Um, <coughs> so the second horizon is a BMGJ, and that's the that's kind of a secondary process that's going on. It's fairly thin here; it's a bit thicker on this side. Um, so the BMGJ uh, again is just uh, just a slightly modified horizon, is really what it means. And what's happening there is it's just the oxidation of iron and aluminum within the original AE horizon. So if you can imagine, if you go back in time. When this soil profile developed, you would have had the, uh, the organic matter accumulation starting at the surface and being incorporated. Um, and then you would add an environment where you were, you were able to have some leaching. And so you'd have some, uh, uh, the, the water would go through that topsoil, uh, through the organic matter, and it would acidify, and, the, and rainwater is acidic. And so then you start to get some leaching out of that, uh, that A horizon. And what's moving out of that A horizon is clays. And so originally, this BM horizon that's up here all the way to the base of that AE horizon that's down there that would have all been one big thick AE horizon what's moving is the clay and so the clay is moving into this what we call a BT horizon in the Canadian system um, and so you have that BT and then for us the GJ indicates uh, uh, I guess moderate influence of water um, if it was just a, uh, if we were to put a BTG or a CG, that would that would be in this all. It's, it's a glacial, of course, depending on uh, what depth that occurs. But in this case, we get kind of we've got distinct modeling pretty much throughout the entire profile. You'll find some spots in the bottom in the sea where it's probably almost prominent, and so, uh, but it's below the 50 centimeter mark, and so this would still only be called imperfectly drained. All right, and then so then what happens is then uh, you've got this really thick AE. And then over time, uh, that AE, uh, the, the pH starts to lower, and then uh, you start to get that secondary process of the, uh, the uh, oxidation of the, uh, the iron and the aluminum that's in the soil. And so you get this nice orange color that's fairly common in, uh, well, obviously in the Brunisols and in uh, the, the BM of, of Chernozems as well, a nice bright orangey brown color. And the, that's basically, those are the processes that are going on. And so. Canadian soils are fairly young, they're fairly juvenile. So this is a what 10 to 13,000 year old soil, so it's not very, it's not very, uh, not very old. Um, one thing is that all the, the paramaterials in this area would have all been carbonated to the surface when they were first deposited, um, 
Uh, in this profile, we're down to just below a meter, and we, there's no carbonates in this in this material. So everything has been leached out of this material. How deep do you have to dig to get the get caloric prisms? Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't tried here. We, I mean, I suppose we could now. We've got a nice big pit. We could take the auger to it and see where we find carbonates. But yeah. Does the indicate from here in the table? Where is it? The line in two. Line line. No here. Oh yeah, but uh, I mean, 0.47, so there are some carbonates in there, but they don't react to hydrochloric acid, and so like below, what, what, we wouldn't call it a calcareous material at all. But no, there's no, a little bit in there. Yes, but it keeps the pH above 7. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's crucial, I think. So much of the redoxy leaches are probably relics yeah. from before the drainage system. Yeah. Probably. Mm -hmm. so uh, I mean, so the other day when we opened this pit up, um, the, uh, the water table was at the at the base of it, you can still see it's it's fairly soft down here. The water table is not too far below. So in the spring, I think the water table still comes up, but not like it not like it, it would have been before they drained it. So are the roots at a meter? Like are those tree roots or grass yeah, roots? Yeah, those are coming from the uh, it's coming from the, uh, the apricot uh, the trees. Apricot trees. Yeah. Okay, so the apricot trees will root yeah. pretty root like a meter deep. So my, my, my question was: yes. Is this soil still imperfect drained or not? It's a good question. It's a question that we talk about all the time. How do you deal with soil that have been drained? And the structure, the difference in the structure between the two. Yes. And that's basically for anywhere. Uh, actually, this is one of the few places I've actually seen two horizons here. You can actually see, actually see an AP over an AH. Usually we see either an AP or an AH. Yeah. Because the AP, or in a lot of cases, in Ontario, they actually. I don't know. It doesn't matter. The large computer, you know, it basically takes everything into it. This clay is very difficult to get to do. So it's a till, so they don't till as deeply, and they don't need to here. This is, this is a vineyard. So originally it was uh, around, this was originally a, uh, a pasture. Can you ever break up? They didn't do much tillage, and if they did, it was probably done with a horse and a, and a plow. Uh, now all they really have to do is just run over, run over the surface. Similar, but not quite the same. Um, Dan's uh, site actually, as uh, John was talking about earlier, was developed uh, like a stone. This is actually the custom material laid down by Mr. Lake Garapaw. And as uh, John talked about, the ice retreated, and as Dan said, he basically left this on the lake bottom. So we know this is a custom material because up on the bench, which is right closer to the escarpment there, that actually this material is actually over top of another till called the Halton Till. And it's a, it's a very uh, very rocky till compared to this one. Actually, it's not a till. This is Lacusa. The reason we know it's Lacusa, it has rocks in it. Uh, where we brought these over from the rock class, right? So it does have rocks in it. But um, this is actually how they got here, where when the ice was melting, ice was so rocky, so rich the lake, melted out and dropped these into the, into the material itself. These are they're not as numerous, and there's no gravel in this material, but these large rocks do still exist. You catch them around different various places. So this is a Lacustre and Fork material. If you look at the bottom here, I'm actually standing on the Clean Street Trail. Right on the bottom, and below here you can actually see the sort of pseudo, pseudo shale. This is nice red iron-rich material, and you can actually see the reduced iron areas in there where the green material. So that's, uh, that's there. Um, <coughs> the shale is very, very soft, and it's actually at the bottom of the sequence where if you go up, go up the escarpment at the top, it's actually very tough uh, dolomitic limestone. I'm sorry, Jim, did you say you're standing on the shale? Oh, you're standing on the shale. So that's the thickness of the Lacustrian deposit right there. You're on the bedrock. Yeah. So it's basically just here. That's the, okay. It just would have been like very brief uh, when when the very relatively brief in geological time. So the only deposit, the only clay that's actually deposited was, was in that amount. Anything below that was never glacial. The, um, David was telling here, Larry was telling me. I'm, I'm here. Oh, there he is. I think it was David was telling me that uh, when you actually dug the pond, you kind of used nature. And then let it basically dug down as far as you could, yeah. let it freeze, 
part here is, okay, because the Queenston Shale is so red, okay, uh, the, the profile itself is red. However, if you look up in the G horizon here, you can see, okay, this is sort of a solid red down here, but you can also see sort of yellow, uh, yellow uh, colors in between here in these various parts. These are called models. These are what we call models. And that is actually, uh, the reason these are different colors is actually it's a different, it's an oxidized ion that is this form of ion. This, the red stuff, would be a, either a ferrihydrate or a hematite, which is a geological source, whereas the yellow up here is a different mineral called graphite. This is, is this graphite. 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 Yeah. Sorry about my pronunciation. No, no, no. no. <laughs> it's fine. Fine? Okay. So the yellowish color, that's, is, and you can see it down in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can see it smeared here, but 